My name is Trey Mangum and this is Shadow Act's opening act. Each week we sit down with some of your favorite black creatives in Hollywood to discuss how they made it in the entertainment industry. And this week we're chatting with Keith Powers. After appearing in Straight Outta Compton and The New Edition Story, Powers went on to star in the Freeform series Famous in Love and the Netflix limited series What If Opposite Renee Zellweger. He's making his major blockbuster debut in Amazon Studios summer film The Tomorrow War, which stars Chris Pratt. We talked to Powers about his early career beginnings and how he pivoted from modeling to acting. I think the moment I first thought about being an actor is when I was in acting class, like when I actually joined acting class, because I was fortunate enough to get signed before actually saying, okay, I'm an actor. Let me uh, join classes and get better and learn the art mm -hmm. it, or educate myself as an actor. At first it was more so like, okay, I was signed to Wilhelmina as a model. I had one foot in the door. I got signed to a smaller boutique agency and I was out auditioning. Didn't really know what I was doing. Just, you know, trying to honestly make ends meet. Yeah. I was straight out of Sacramento uh, from high school. I had dropped out of college. I was going to college for like six months. I had dropped out. So I just felt a lot of pressure. And I was like, I have to find a way to make ends meet. So yeah, when I joined an acting class after going on a bunch of auditions, I was like, no, let me actually join class so I could that uh, so I could really consider myself an actor. Cause you know, let me really try to like study the craft. And then I fell in love in class. I like literally fell in love. Yeah, yeah. And what do you remember about your very first acting job? And is there anything that you took away from that gig that you think you've applied throughout your career so far? I think the first, I think one of my first was like a Ross commercial, bro. Like, <laughs> like it was like a Ross commercial. And I just remember, I mean, what I could say from taking from that was just the excitement I felt of like being on set and feeling like I had more to do than just pose and take pictures, which, you know, modeling is an art in itself, especially more so on the East Coast. But I was just like, man, this is cool. I'm actually like doing something physical, like moving and moving around and smiling. And it felt good. I, and then I remember from that, I did like a Gatorade commercial. I did like this one more Gatorade commercial. And that's when I was like, yo, this is fire. Like I had to like act like I was lifting weights and do football drills. And I had to keep yelling like one more. That was the theme of the commercial. And I remember just feeling like. Yo, Loki, I think like, I remember that commercial, yeah. or like, or that, or at least that theme of commercials with the one. Now you probably for sure they played, they like overplayed it, like they played it <laughs> a lot. It was like back in 2013. That makes sense. That makes um, sense. But yeah, no, I think uh, shooting that and then like working with a bunch of different actors on set, and it was kind of cool because I was, I was like, like the lead of the commercial, but like everybody that that they brought in. Um, I don't know what you would call them on uh, commercials, probably not principal uh, talent. They were all super cool. And it just, the, the feeling of collaborating with other actors was just like second to none. It reminded me of, of when I played football growing up. Cause you know, it's mm -hmm. a team effort. That's literally how I felt. I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And some of your um, first notable roles have been playing um, real life people in um, mm -hmm. biopics. As an actor, do you think that's more challenging tackling real life subjects um, as opposed to not? Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. It's it's is it comes with a great deal of responsibility, honestly. And it's to me, it's frightening. I'm just be real. Like, I, I honestly, to be real, if I could go without playing someone else, like someone else that's super famous, I would. Like, I <laughs> I want to play like original characters or like comic book characters. I don't I don't really. Cause it's tough, man, and 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 you know someone is trusting you with their story, and, and and for it to be told correctly, but also for you to embody who they are, in a, in the in the correct way. And I think for me, it's definitely challenging. And, I, and you want to hear, I think people want to hear actors say, "I want to challenge myself." I do want to challenge myself, but I want to challenge myself in a way where I'm also going to have fun. I don't want to like stress myself out. And my whole thing too is about like just really protecting my mental health in this industry because man, it's it's a tough one, it's not easy. And I just feel like, you know, you shouldn't do stuff because you're saying, oh, I'm doing this because I wanna challenge myself because people feel like I should challenge myself. If you wanna challenge yourself personally and it's a personal thing, yeah, uh, but but it's, it's easy to fall into those traps. 
I yeah. think. And speaking of mental health, I know you. Know, we're. I feel like we're such. We're so much more conscious about um, mental health awareness, especially during the pandemic, with going through everything over the past year one, and then also you know people not being um, as connected with each other over the pandemic. As an actor, how do you think that you've been over the past year as far as learning more about yourself and also you know learning about the business too because you know there were times where you know no one was working and mm-hmm. you had to figure out when to go back to work work looked different because of covid so as an actor how was that experience like for you well i actually, I actually lost the film during the pandemic wow um, yeah i had booked the film right when like right when the day the day before we went on lockdown so wow. like 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 it's like actual lockdown i remember it was a, it was a state of emergency and then i remember it was like it was like two days in between then and i remember going to a casting office and like it was no actors in there it was nancy nayer's casting office it was no actors in there and they were like yeah we're not seeing any actors because of COVID. just like one or two actors at a time i was like whoa this is weird because usually her rooms are like packed with people i remember reading they liked it they booked me um and then next day we went to lockdown and then for months, Sony would never give an answer about like when they were going to start back productions. And just eventually, I never we we, we never got into negotiations, but they they said that I um I had booked it. They never sent the deal over because the pandemic started and it was yeah. just like everything went on on hold. And then the movie just never happened. And for sure, I've lost the movie in the past because I was on a TV show that wouldn't let me do a film. So I've always had like this, I've been traumatized since then. It's probably, that was probably one of the worst feelings because I was super excited about booking that. And this time it didn't hit me too hard, maybe because we didn't do negotiations, but it was still like, man, this is crazy. And then we went so long without working. And it it did, it was, it was a, I think, I think knowing that we all were going through something similar was kind of like, okay, it's more than just like me not be able to, oh no, I can't do this cool acting job because of this serious pandemic. And it was more so me thinking like, man, it's people really losing everything. (laughs) Like, you know what I'm saying? I was still able to be in my spot playing video games, just chilling until I get a phone call until, you know, we get the virus in order. So for me, I was just like, man, let me not complain. It could be way worse. But I definitely was thinking like, I wonder what's going to be like, how are we going to get back to, I still was thinking like, how are we going to get back to working? What is, what is, what is, what is the future hold? But yeah. And I want to talk about one of the roles you gained a lot of attention for um, early on, which was your role in the new edition story. Um, mm-hmm. You know, people still love that um, that miniseries so much. People call it like one of the best things BET ever done. And even mm-hmm. to this day, like there's still like this cult like following of people who watch that every time it comes on BET yeah. on a Saturday or Sunday. So how do you think that being a part of that kind of changed or, um, you know, impacted the trajectory of your career right now? Um, I think really it just, it just put more eyes on me, you know, honestly, it put like, you know, people were able to see who I was and, and know who me for Keith, you know, and, and I think in the past, you know, I was in Strata Compton briefly, um, playing Dr. J's little brother. And before that, Pete, as social media started picking up, I remember just people would kind of share my photos over like Tumblr and stuff like that. <laughs> so they kind of knew of me, but like, I think being on New Edition was just like them being, okay, we know him, that's Keith Powers. He's mm-hmm. he's an actor. And you know, it gave me, it just put more eyes on me. And, and that's what I was most appreciative because a lot of people watched it when it dropped. So yeah, yeah. and and, and it, it was a good ensemble and me really, I would just, I'm always the type of dude, I love ensemble casts. I like, I love ensembles. Like I know a lot of actors, I mean, not a lot of actors, some actors don't really like ensembles because they really want, you know, to focus on a certain storyline, yeah. play a character where their storyline is being the focal point. But me, I'm just like, being a part of that, I just wanted to do my part and people really, you know, reacted and, and loved me playing Ronnie. And I was surprised, I was like, man, cause I was stressed out when I first booked that because I don't dance. <laughs> I never did choreography. I had to learn choreography in a week. So I was really stressed out with that one, but people really show love. And I think it's always good as an actor because at the same time, we are also entertainers. So when people, you know, when, we re- when they recognize us for our work, it's just good moving forward because you come with like, you know, a little fan base that could support you. 
Yeah, yeah. And speaking of a fan base, like, you know, over the past several years, you've gained a lot of popularity, um, like role after role after role. How do you think you've been able to, you know, cope with fame and being in the public eye more and more as the years go on? To be real with you, man, I got like that. I call it struggle fame. It's like this joke I have with myself. It's really like struggle fame to me. Like, I just shared like a story on Twitter when I was in line getting the vaccine and it was a long line and I sent a picture to my group chat and I was like, yo, y'all look at this line. Like, this is crazy. And they were like, bro, you don't use your celebrity enough. Just cut the line. And I was like, bro, what are you talking about? If I cut the line, they're going to look at me like, get to the back of the line. And I might and lose then, my then they're gonna know it's They're going to know it's you too at that point. Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> and even if they did know me, it's not to the, it's not to the point where it's like, oh yeah, no, no, he has to, he has to get in the front and get his shot now. Like, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I was laughing about it because I'm like, I'm on that fence thing. Like in some places people show crazy love and they come up to me, but it's never felt like the point where it was like, I, it was unbearable. To me, it's just cool. People recognize you for your work. Um, they show love, like, and then go on with their day. And we can run into each other again. And they just like, ah, nice to see you again. <laughs> like, and I, I love that. I think it's super cool. It's like, it's like if you could be recognized for your for your job and, and people show love and people tell you how it inspired them, I love it. Um, it's been some times, I'm not gonna lie, where I get like super shy or embarrassed or I don't know in this weird way, but you know, that's just me, that's just me being too observant. Because I, I, it's just like when somebody's asking me for a picture, I'm kind of looking out the side of my eye, like, okay, like this is kind of weird. Because you know, some people don't. A lot of people don't know who I am, so they're looking like, who yeah. is he? Yeah. And they'll literally like, come who's up this and person? Be, people are taking pictures. <laughs> exactly, and they'll literally come up and be like, wait, who? Like, what do you do? Who are you? And then in my head, I'm like, well, if you got to ask. I'm not really that yeah. famous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I still got some work to do. But I mean, it has an impact in my life negative, negatively. But you know, I've I've always tried to like. My goal is to model myself behind, you know, the great Muhammad Ali. I always like how Muhammad Ali was like the people's champ. You know, I felt like Muhammad never had to walk around with security or nothing because people just loved him for who he was. He stood for he stood for something and he was super down to earth and just real and great at what he did, you know, and he was super confident. But more so than anything, people follow him because of his humility, I think, overall, and him speaking his mind. And 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 that's how I, that's how I kind of want to be. I'm like, I don't want to, I mean, if I get to the point where I can't control it, you know, it is what it is. But my, ultimately, I want to be able to still live my life, walk around freely, you know, people who come up to me, I'm like, oh, appreciate that. And just yeah, keep it yeah. pushing rather than, you know, there's some people that literally can't go anywhere by themselves. They got to be in like an SUV, got to have a point person step out the car, grab something for them. I don't want to do that. Like if I want to walk in a store and get a shirt, I want to get it myself, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So that's just me, that's how fame has been for me. I, I call it the struggle fame, but I love it. Uh, I really, it's a good <laughs> place to like, be, honestly. I feel like it's also a weird mix too, because I mean, you, you, you still can be like, you know, noticeable, but it's still like also be yourself. You know, you don't have, yeah. you don't have to like be necessarily two different people too. So I feel like the struggle it's the weird, fame is it's, another weird thing. No, no, it's the weirdest mix. And in some, I think what happens is some celebrities feel embarrassed by it sometimes because they feel like, oh, I got to this point in my career, everyone should know me. And if they don't know me, then, maybe like something is wrong but it's like nobody ever talks about that that point of being um you know in the public eye where it's like some people may know you and some people may yeah. not and it's just yeah. it's just it is what it is i don't know this week's black entertainment trivia fact which r b act did not perform on sister sister maya destiny's child 702 or black street Find out the answer next week on ShadowAnAct.com. Another role that you had um, was in the Netflix series, What If? And um, I remember when that casting first broke and we reported on it, um, it was so interesting to me because I know that I think broadcast um, pilot season, it just wrapped. And I'm like, oh, so this is what he's been up to. Um, this, yeah. this new Netflix series is coming. So what was that experience like? You know, that was kind of like a, a prestige-esque uh, Netflix series. And Renee Zellweger mm -hmm. was a part of it. I'm Jane Levy. Um, you and lots of other people. How was that experience like being on a, um, a limited series like that? And also, I think it was your second series following um, mm -hmm. Famous in Love. So mm -hmm. um, how was that experience like? Oh man, it was fun. I, I was just happy I, I booked it because I was 
27 at the time. The role was for a 28 year old, and I've never played my actual age. I always <laughs> play younger. So I remember booking it, and I was like, oh, snap, I get to play like my age, but like a year older than my age. This is crazy. Like, this is fire. I get to play older. Um, and then, I mean, Samantha Ware played my like love interest and like working with her, which is super easy. She's super talented. And it was fun. And Renee, me and Renee never actually had scenes together, but Renee was super cool to be around with on set. I just love Renee from, um, I mean, she done a lot of great stuff, like, you know, a lot of great stuff, but I just love her and me, myself, yeah. and Irene. So, <laughs> so like when I met her, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, Renee, you gotta understand as a kid, my favorite movie was me, myself, and Irene. Like I'm, I'm a big Jim Carrey fan. So I was like, that's one of my ones that's that he's done that's my favorite but nah it was cool being a part of that i think um you know doing doing series like that i started out i guess i you could say that i've done more tv so i'm used to like the pace of doing a tv show Mm -hmm. so it's like it just felt it felt really simple going to work every day um i look back at the series sometimes i watch scenes though and ever since i've been like educating myself more as an actor i'm like man i could have did this differently or did this differently or made todd more of this but it's definitely it was definitely a cool stepping stone and just to be a part of a cast like that to show people like no y'all i'm i'm, I'm still really trying to be an actor yeah. <laughs> i know that i started off as a model and stuff but i'm still really trying to be an actor like that's my whole thing is just trying to show people like hey i'm still trying to be an actor this is what i want to do I know it may look from the outside looking in like it's come easy to me, but it's, it's it's hard work. It's not easy whatsoever. And since you did get to play your age in that series, um, in your career, have you ever felt like there was a time where you would be um, kind of pigeonholed into doing, I guess, like teen slash young adult roles? I know that's sometimes a lot of people go through that. And then yeah. sometimes it, it's kind of a mixed bag of reactions when that jump is made to more adult work. They're like, whoa, 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 we, we know you as a high schooler. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that happens yeah. a lot of time. I know that happened with Zendaya recently um, and Malcolm and Marie. Um, mm-hmm. I know that happens with a lot of people. So for you, have you ever had that experience where you think that, you know, you would be boxed in by only doing a specific kind of role? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I when I did What If, I remember, he tried so hard not to read comments, but I remember reading some comments and they were just like, yo, he looks way too young. Like, or this dude looks, I've seen a couple of comments like that. Understandable. I mean, you kind of, you get that in real life too, in everyday life. Like when people don't yeah. know your age, they'll be like, oh, you look young. Like, I guess it's just a part of it, but you know, it's a champagne problem, honestly. But I have, you know, I have felt like, oh man, I don't want to keep playing this teenage jock, teenage love interest, teenage, you know, the attractive guy that uh, wins over the girl or loses the girl to the more less nerdy guy or you know that cliche Mm, storyline thing mm. that happens um i was more bothered by it before now i kind of like told myself you know what if the story is a good story i'll continue to show people that i could do that role to the point where it gets deniable my hope is that it gets uh, like they can't they can't say oh we don't want to watch them in the next thing it's like no be a part of quality do your do good and then hopefully you know something else opens up for you i think you know it's been some people that have done roles like that all the time and then um i don't know got a chance like even with heath ledger when he got a chance to do joker and he was able to show people like i'm not just this like love interest uh guy i could really do something differently i remember when he first booked joker people were mad about that i remember i I was in high school and that happened people were not feeling him playing joker and look what he did i think sometimes you could you could utilize that in your favor and be like, okay, these roles are coming to me more easy. Let me put myself out there to people and show people what I can do. Maybe try to switch it up as much as possible because the more eyes, the more times people see you and trust you as an actor, I think it, it opens up more opportunity for you. But there is this kind of thing of like, I don't want to get pigeonholed. I mean, that's always the case. You know, you, you, could, you could go against the grain and be like, no, I'm not doing this. Or you could try to use it in your favor, I guess you know, timing and opportunity and all that plays a factor. Mm-hmm. You never really know, but I, I try not to, don't get too lost in into feeling like, oh no, I, I don't want to get pigeonholed in this. Like, nah, this is a good role though. And part of a good project, why not do it? Like, you know, you could kill it. <laughs> you know, that's like, you, you've done that, just, just do it. But yeah, early on, I was definitely scared. I was just like, oh man, I don't want to, I want to do, I want to do like the more heavier stuff. Like, <laughs> but now I'm kind of like, 
I, I t- I've taken that pressure off of me and just being like, whatever comes to me now, because I understand I'm I'm up and coming. Let me do the best that I can and then move on. You know, yeah. hopefully that helps me move on. Yeah. And, you know, you're reaching new heights now with uh, The Tomorrow War, which is your first, you know, big blockbuster, big budget movie. Um, Mm -hmm. What's the difference between doing a project like this that has, you know, lots of bells and whistles (laughs) than other projects that you've um, done in your career? Because it is it is like a it's a big step right now. Man, it's crazy. Like being on this set, like being on a big budget set, first of all. It will spoil you. There's too much perks. It's way too many perks. Like, first of all, the craft service is crazy. The craft service is ridiculous. Like the selection, the trailer is beautiful. Like I'm just like, I could chill here all day. Then you got the wardrobe that's insane. You go to set and it's like being at an amusement park. The set mm-hmm. is built beautifully. It's so many people on set that su- that are super cool that you could connect with and talk to all day. It's like, you know, it doesn't feel like work, honestly. And then, you know, you turn around and do an indie, trailer might not be as good as it was, like yeah. like it was on that Tomorrow War set. Crafty might not have, you know, uh, uh, the sweet tarts that they was having on the set. Like they might have this <laughs> other candy, this, this, that doesn't, this, this non-brand candy that you gotta get. Um, yeah. Like the wardrobe, sometimes you might gotta bring your own clothes or they're using shoes from your own closet for scenes. Yeah. Like it, that's how it is and, um, is, is definitely a difference. I actually love both for their own reasons. I feel like, you know, I love like the grit and getting dirty of the indie film and the gorilla type of shooting yeah, uh, yeah. A feel. But then I love just kicking back and being pampered and, you know, staying at the, the four, se- uh, not the four seasons, but like the Ritz Carlton or whatever they keep us in Atlanta when we're shooting uh, the Tomorrow War. But it's definitely a difference. But um, the Tomorrow War is it's still, you still got to bring, bring your A game. You can't be too comfortable. It actually, also made me nervous because I was just like, we're on a big set. Nobody's playing no games. They've mm-hmm. worked with other great actors in the past, like these producers and stuff. So you got to come in, you got to do your part, but it's definitely fun. It's so fun being on that set. Yeah, yeah. And talk to us about your character in the film and what you think uh, viewers can expect from this one. Uh, yeah, my, my character is uh, Major Greenwood, Commander Greenwood. Um, he plays really the right hand to Romeo Command and, um, you know, he doesn't say much more. He's more active than saying much, but when he does say something, it's for a reason, but he's more so about the action. And I really like that. And I think it's a real good stepping stone for me as an actor, because this is what I yeah. ultimately want to do. I want to do action. I want to do a lot of physical stuff and action comedies and stuff. And um, the movie is just, I mean, it's so original. You know, it's this war that's happening in the future. They come back and they draft people in the present. I mean, from their perspective, it's from the past to fight this war 30 years in the future against this alien, um, these white spikes that are terrifying, but also <laughs> super cool. Very terrifying. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, and then, it, I mean, we're time jumping. It's 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 it's, it's sci-fi, aliens, um, and it's comedy as well. And yeah. it's dope, man. It's, it's, it's a very, like, diverse cast. You know, it's a lot of people of color in the cast. It's 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 cool to see these different people, all from different walks of life. In this in 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 the story, they're drafting all these different people to fight in this war that wouldn't necessarily be in the military. It's just a it's just a real cool film and and a fun film. And it feels like one of those old like those early two thousand summer blockbuster yeah. joints. And I, I'm I'm super proud to be a part of it, and really more so. I I know I learned a lot on set from it, and and that's what I'm super grateful for and then working with Chris McKay, man, just super cool as a director coming from animation. And he just has this imagination that's really cool to be, you know, to witness on set and, and the, just the notes he gives and stuff. I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of this. I, I'm just like, it's just still so surreal to me. Cause I'm just, I always think about like, like where I was as a kid and just thinking about like watching these movies and being in a theater and just being like locked into the screen and, not knowing anything about this industry and to be doing this, and you just think about stuff like, wow, that is insane. I would have never thought this. I would have never thought this. So, but yeah, it's definitely a stepping stone and, and I, I, I'm, I'm excited for people to see this one for sure. Yeah. And also looking ahead, I know you have um, a Netflix project coming up soon, The Perfect Find with um, mm-hmm. Gabrielle Union directed by um, Numa Perrier. I know it's mm-hmm. very in the early stages, but what are you excited the most about tackling um, this project? Oh man, this is going. This is probably going to be the first project where people really get to see what I can be in this industry as far as an actor, like what I could bring to this industry. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a love story, but it's also funny. It's a it's a very it's not your typical love story. It's it's a complicated one. <laughs> you know, um, I, it's 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 kind of like that whole Stella got her groove back vibe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Numa Numa, I'm so happy to be doing it with Numa because Numa really is a film junkie. Like, yeah. and it inspires me how much she just loves film. Yeah, I'm film like scared Jezebel to be on set. Was, her film Jezebel was so, so good. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I watched that. I watched that on Netflix. I always tell her, I'm like, dude, it's so cool to see this film, you know, about this young girl who's a sex worker. But to see it from her perspective, you know, it's easy for people to judge from the outside looking in. But just to tell this story from this young black girl's perspective was super cool. But Numa just knows film so much. And I always feel nervous. I'm like, man being on set and then she asked about a film I'm like I haven't seen that one it's like <laughs> what <laughs> I know it's gonna be some of those moments but I feel like I'm in such good hands and then also working with Gabby I mean I, I grew up watching Gabby so this is this is gonna be cool you know playing her love interest is crazy to me I'm also really pretty nervous about it but you know once we get into it is it, we're gonna have fun and just you know bounce you know comedic timing off each other and just have fun. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited though. I think I think it's gonna show people what I could do in this industry and, and for them to be like, oh, okay, I see, okay, I see, I see who he is as an actor and why I should support him. Or you might say, why I should not? You know, you never know. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited to show people what I can do, but I'm also nervous, I ain't gonna lie. Super yeah, nice. yeah, it sounds like such a fun project. I know a lot of people mm-hmm. are already excited about it just from the the casting announcements. I know Noom has been dropping like details slowly on on like yeah. storyboards and stuff mm-hmm. on social media. So um, people are excited about that. And uh, what are some goals that you have set? Um, things that you want to accomplish with your career in the mm-hmm. coming years? Man, I really I want to book a series. I want to be on a series, like preferably a comedic series. <laughs> like a good like 25 minute joint on like a, you know, like HBO or Showtime or Stars or or even FX or something like that. Um, yeah. Or, you know, it could be a drama series as well. I really want to be on a series. I want people to watch me every week just to, you know, get used to seeing me on film every week. Um, that's, that's like one of my top goals, uh, you know, continue to do films, of course, and, you know, eventually start producing my own films, you know, on some IP start my own production company that's the goal you know so we could you know, and create opportunities for others and i got a whole bunch of different dreams as well opening stuff back up home in my hometown and you know doing a lot of charity work a lot of uh, mental health charity work for the community and stuff like that i got a lot of stuff but that's more um that's stuff i gotta really hone in on but right now as far as acting man i really want to book a series and Shoot, I want to do another blockbuster like this. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> now that you've, do done, now that you've one. done one, you have to do some more. You have to do some more now. I know you, it's it's like it's just like a little taste, and like no, I have to keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely want to want to do more of these. But a series, man, I, I love watching TV series. I, I I get so excited. I'm the type of guy that'll watch one slow on purpose so it won't end fast. <laughs> My friends get mad at me because I let a show go on like four seasons before I say, all right, it's time. I did wow. it with Snowfall. I did it with Snowfall. My buddy Melvin, he plays Manbo on, mm-hmm. on Snowfall. He ended up getting on the show. And he was like, bro, why haven't you watched the show? It's been out for years. I was like, I'm going to watch it, bro. Like, trust me, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it at my pace. And it's going to be so amazing to me. I'm going to experience it way better because I didn't have to wait every week. I just get to <laughs> run through it. Yeah. And I literally caught up and I got to this final season and then started watching it on time. Then I got irritated because I'm like, this is so good. I gotta wait every week. So I wanna be <laughs> I wanna be a part of a show where people feel that way. Like, oh, I can't wait to watch this next week. But those comedic shows that's dropping lately are amazing. That's what I wanna yeah. be a part of. Like these, man, I love Barry, I love Dave, I love Insecure, I love um Atlanta. Like, man, I wanna be a part of something like that. So that's that's my goal right now. I'm pretty sure it'll happen. You know, it'll happen when it's supposed to. So yeah. me, I'm just live, being present and just having fun. Keith Power spoke to us about being a young black creative in Hollywood adjusting to fame, how the pandemic has impacted his perspective on his career and his ambitions for the next few years of his career. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Opening Act with Keith Powers. Don't forget to give us a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your podcast. You can watch this interview in full and catch exclusive content on lunchtable.com. Just create an account and you can catch all sorts of Shadow Night content, such as Reel It Back and Shadow Act Live. Until next time.